What it do, YouTube? It's your boy, Mike from NYC. We back with another reaction. Today, we're reacting to We Argue the Most Controversial NBA Topics by Through the Wire. It's been a minute since I did some NBA stuff, man. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like when you go off to school, you know what I'm saying? You go off to college, and then you come back to the crib, and it's like, you love being at college, you know what I'm saying? You love the stuff that you was doing, but when you really come back to the crib, like, you lay in your bed, and you like... Yeah, man, I miss home. I don't, you know, I, I don't know how long I want to be here, but man, I love, you know, home. It's like, it's nothing like home. You know what I'm saying? Nothing make you smile than seeing the cinnamon toast crunch in the, in the, in the cereal cabinet. You know what I'm saying, yeah, I got cinnamon toast crunch at the, at the at the campus. So, you know, for me, this is like cinnamon toast crunch. Let's get into it. What's poppin', everybody? Welcome back. Today, we're doing NBA debates. Everybody's gonna go against each other at least once. You got 60 seconds to debate your topic, and I want everybody to remember, this is not based on the player that is better, but the topics that you debate. There'll be two people up and two people as the judges. Your first debate, who is a better player at their peak, Steph Curry or Kevin Durant? Ooh, ooh. I don't know, let's see what they gotta say. Rock, rock, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Thank you, I will take Steph Curry. And I want you to go first. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, Kevin Durant. Your minute is just begun. Kevin Durant is the better player over Stephen Curry, especially at his peak, because even when they did get to the finals two together, they had they won two rings together. Kevin Durant was able to take away two finals MVP for that. Not Stephen Curry. Also, we also know that Stephen, or Kevin Durant is the best scorer of all time, no matter what system he is. It don't matter if he has a dude that dominates the ball or he doesn't. He can get it in any spots he wants. He has... He has ah! the best handle for a dude of his size. He can do all the stuff. That nigga fumbling. But he can also shoot the ball from long too. So he's got that mix up. He can almost, he almost tears apart every other defense because you're going to have to double him. If you live one-on-one -on -one with him, there's no way you survive. So you got to double him. He doesn't, he doesn't have the craziest passing, but he uses his ability to score to help his teammates be better. It's a reason why he helps uh, players like Seth Curry, Joe here. They can't always get their own. Look, he he folded. That they have to leave get his ugly, get his dumb ass. He folded. It's tough though. It's tough. It's tough. But you gotta really be quick. It might fold him, bro. That's your time starts now. You mentioned that Kevin Durant can fit in any system. I'm here to argue that Steph Curry is a system in itself. He's the most feared individual player, no matter where he is on the court. Your guy left his squad to team up with my guy because that was his only chance to make it work. 50, 40, 90 multiple times his career, 30 point per game score. And we made a consensus a little while ago. Boy, is top 10 of all time. The resume speaks for itself. There's no singular person that, that puts fear in the opposing coach's heart more than Steph Curry. Because if he got the ball, you can't guard him. If he don't got the ball, you can't guard him. Kevin Durant's a great threat. He's one of the greatest ever do it. But if he ain't got the ball, I'm kind of just chilling. Steph Curry makes you work 100% of the time. And that's all I really ask for. He is the most dominant offensive point guard we've ever seen in the history of basketball. From the logo, from in, in, in the paint, it doesn't really matter with Steph Curry. And he makes everybody around him better. I don't know if I can say the same thing about Kevin Durant all the time. There's never been situations where Steph Curry didn't make his teammates better. Time. Rebuttal. How many seconds of rebuttal? 30, 30 seconds of rebuttal. Your time starts. Now. He panicking. He panicking. <laughs> Yo, he panicking. He said, who, me? He panicking, bro. That's so funny. Bro, I've never seen somebody panic like that much. Like I said, rebuttal. How many seconds of rebuttal? 30, 30 seconds of rebuttal. Your time starts now. My rebuttal into that is I don't think Stephen Curry can just play with anybody. I think it takes high IQ players to do so. We said, we've seen it right now. You have young players on the team. They struggle playing with him. They had it before. But even when Wiggins first got there, he wasn't like that. They had to learn the system that Steph Curry grew up in. We all know him to be in. So he doesn't just work with everybody. It takes high IQ players because... It takes players like Draymond Green to find him in his spots and everything like that. It takes players that have patience, players that know that where his spots are and everything like that. Kevin Durant, you don't need that. You give him the ball and go out the way. I would argue Kevin Durant does need that. I mean, he's had his own team and his shit ain't done anything. So Curry has been the system before Kevin Durant got there. That first championship run, there's no better situation than that. You mentioned that him and the new guys, whatever. When Steph Curry's on the court, the team is good. 
You talking about those minutes with Steph Curry's off the court are dog shit. But if Steph Curry's in the lineup, it don't matter who the four is. Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Moody, fucking James Wiseman can play with Steph Curry, and they will be a positive system. Kevin Durant, he talked about his teammates, and then some of oh, you expect that. I'm going to be honest. That was that, that wasn't bad though. That wasn't bad. If I had this, if I had to give it to somebody though, uh, I would give it to Kenny slightly. I think Kenny had a better initial argument, but I think uh, Mike had a, a slightly better rebuttal. I think he did have a slightly better rebuttal. I think he he could have made a better argument for Kevin Durant. Honestly, I really do. I really do think he could have made a better argument for Kevin Durant. Um, but I guess I give it to Kenny. I'm very proud and impressed with how Mike kept up. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to give the nod with KB, but the only reason I gave the nod to KB is because literally his last rebuttal. I think he did a good job of taking everything Mike said and shooting it back at him. Because, yeah, when the Warriors have played this year with the young... Like, it's literally... The the Warriors starters were all have all been plus, but it's just been the bench that just got awful. But um, you did your thing. You did, you did your thing. You he didn't do bad. Points I would make against Steph. He was I panicking. You drilled on you what your rebuttal was and your opening statement. I would have picked the parts. Steph. But you, and you also, you forgot the two KD daggers over LeBron. Well, I mean, he, he said the MVPs, though. I think that all ties into the finals MVPs. Yeah. Uh, I'm going KB as well. It was close, but I'm going to give it to not to KB. I think his rebuttal was a little bit better than Mike's. Who's a better player right now? Jalen Brown or Brandon Ingram? Ooh. Who'd you, who would I want? I would definitely take Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram is definitely the easier case to make. Ah, that's not even true. That's not even true. JB, man, I, honestly, I would take JB. I would take JB. He go first, and I want... Oh, man. That's tough. That's tough. Give me Jalen Brown. Yup, I would have win JB too. Hey man, we talking about the Sun Reaper. When you look at the Sun Reaper, it ain't much that the Sun Reaper cannot do on the court. He's six eight six nine, ability to handle the ball like a point guard, ability to post up. He's a, literally a walking mismatch when you talk about on a night in night out basis. Can't many people match up with Brandon Ingram or what he brings to the court. And we ain't even talking about the scoring aspect. The man's a great facilitator. When you're six nine and you had a type of vision, you got guys like Zion, Valanciunas, guys who you can feed and you can make better. I think that adds a lot to your game. I don't think Jalen Brown, for me personally, is making guys around him better. We know that that's a one guy who his main goal is to shoot the ball, and that's all he's looking to do. Facts. Um, some nights it ain't more, ain't that efficient. Brandon Ingram is one of the more efficient scorers in the league. We're talking about a guy that's shooting like 45% from the field. He's going to give you like 38% from three. Brandon Ingram is the epitome of efficiency and actually going out and getting the job done on a night-in, night-out basis. And defensively, he has a, he's a guy that will bring it defensively as well. He might not be A1. He might not be the, one of the best in the league, but he's definitely not a snub. Jalen Brown. Yo, this is hard. I don't want niggas to think this is, especially when you don't get to come in with, you like, you don't know what you're going to come in with. You can't do your research. You can't, you got to straight, ha, you got to be able to straight off the top of your feet. Like, niggas is kind of panicking. Like, niggas is nervous, but it's hard, though. Shooting guards in the league. There's only a couple guys better than him. Devin Booker, arguably Donovan Mitchell as far as this season. Jalen Brown is a rare breed of a guy who can stand out and be an all-star level some potentially all NBA level player next to a guy like Jason Tatum. It's not a lot of guys in the league who shares the floor with a guy that's getting 20 plus shots a night and they can still get their own. Jalen Brown is also a guy who we've seen in the final step up when Jason Tatum was looking a little shaky and led them back in a game one that everybody on Twitter was falling in love with. This is a guy who has improved drastically over the course of his career while playing on the court with a lot of different guys. He's always showed his value. Even when his team had Kyrie, Gordon Hayward, Marcus Morris taking a lot of shots, Jason Tatum, Al Horford, Terry Rozier, Jalen Brown, through the course of his career, no matter who he's been sharing the floor with, has always shown himself to be a positive plus player. This is a guy that the Brooklyn Nets tried to get for Kevin Durant and the Boston Celtics said, hey, we fine with everything we have. Jared, your time starts... Now, there's between Brandon Ingram and Jalen Brown there. Brandon Ingram is a guy who has shown you that when he is your number one option, your team is pretty solid. I don't think if you take Jalen Brown and make him your number one option, your team is good. Because here's why. 
Jalen Brown isn't the type that's going to try to make sure everybody's getting their own and make sure that they're in the right places. I feel like Jalen Brown's the type that he's going to go out and try to get you 40, and it's going to be an L. Whereas Brandon Ingram, he's probably going to go out and get you a little 30-point triple-double and make sure everybody's eating, but also he can still go get his late in the game. Good rebuttal. One thing I will say, I love Brandon Ingram, but this time with the Lakers didn't look the best because he had to share with LeBron James. So that's a little thing. Jalen Brown, again, shows his value no matter who he's playing with. That's why he's so sought after because you can put him as your guy for a few years, but I don't think you're building around Jalen Brown or Ingram as your solidified number one. But when we talk about complimenting whoever your front guy is, Jalen Brown does that. He's showing us he can defend. He's showing us he can take over games. Brandon Ingram only really shines when it's by itself. Zion comes in. I don't know if Brandon Ingram is still an all-star. That's close. I, I I think I'll give it to uh uh what's it uh, the bigger dude? I forget his name. Uh, Derek. It's I think uh, I, I would give it to Derek. I think Pierre won me over with that very last point at the buzzer beater. With it with it being that yeah, if Zion's been back and Brandon Ingram hasn't even really been in conversations for an All Star appearance when Z plays, but Jalen Brown is consistently in the conversation. I also think Derek was. Saying shit that I'm like, are we talking about Brandon Ingram or are we talking about LeBron James? Brandon Ingram has a literal zero triple doubles in his career. Not even a 10-10-10 ten, ten, ten game. Literal zero. <laughs> I was. It, it's tough because you could then come back and say, well, Jalen Brown has been on the court with Jason Tatum his entire career, right? Um, Brandon Ingram, they both got to come in together and mold their games after each other. Where Brandon Ingram has to come in and share everything with LeBron you have to be complimentary to LeBron so it's like you don't really get you have to think on your you have to really be able and it's not like who's you can't answer the question well because so-and-so got this person I'm gonna say that they got it who do you think made the better case and I think I think Derek got him a little bit I was super impressed with how D-Mills came out but I think the rebuttal D-Mills still a deal he was making points to prove that it's I would take Ingram over Jalen I would take Jalen Brown over Ingram Based on just hearing from what, if I didn't even know who they was, and I just heard what they said, I would probably take uh, Jalen Brown. I keep getting them confused, though, because I, I feel like he would take Brandon Ingram, like you yeah, said, because that's his guy. I was like, this is Brandon Ingram. Your question is, is taking good for the NBA? Uh, No. I would want to, I would want no. If I had to say yes... Tanking is good for the NBA. When you look at what happens in the NBA when teams tank and when they get those top players, you get, you know, generational talents, LeBron James, teams that actually need them, like a LeBron James, a Patrick Ewing, dying, basically desperate organizations in need of a player to turn their franchise around. Tanking is good for the NBA. It's it's really, it's you're really going to get a generational talent. Tanking is never really bad. Worst case scenario from, from tanking, you don't get the player, but you was never going to be good in the first place. You were never going to be a great team to begin with. You only improve your chances of actually getting the player that you need to actually take that organization and turn it around. That would be like my premise for the taking, tanking, but I would, I would argue not for tanking. I would have a way better argument not for tanking. That's kind of a sexy spot to hit your shoes. Sick. You go first. I'm going to say yes. Taking. I have no, no. Taking is not good for the NBA for multiple reasons. First, I'm going to start off with the viewership. We all know there's players in the league like Shea who's been hooping, hooping, hooping. But for some of the years, he can't even play half the season because his team wants to take and get the best, the best pick. Another reason why is because the viewership's already going down. We can't afford to keep. Hey, we can't afford to not. It's up. hard. It's hard. That's why there's fans coming in. It's hard. Fan out there, never had a chance to go to an NBA game. He's been watching the Suns all his life since he's growing up. He finally gets a chance to go to a Suns game, and he can't watch Devin Booker because they're trying to get a pick. That it's just not. It don't sit right with me. I think the NBA has done a good job. <laughs> they listen to their fans, and if they, they they listen to their fans and they <gasps> try to get he's the best try to get. I'm breaking down. The big argument. I'm breaking down. 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 I'm
said that shit don't sit right with me. I couldn't. How the hell you do so good in round one and now you just shit the bed in round two? That shit don't sit right with me. I said I had multiple views. I had, I had like one, maybe two. <laughs> you gotta, you really only got like one or two views, but you gotta stretch them bitches out. Like you gotta really freestyle. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. You re it's hard, man. The camera's on, like you stuttering. He already fumbled the first five seconds. It's hard, bro. Hey, listen. You might talk about the viewership, but guess what? It's a slow grind. Eventually, you gonna get that viewership when your team is actually good and you have good players that's worth watching. Nobody wanna go out there and constantly see a dude like Shay risk getting hurt all the time when you can progressively increase his minutes over the years, as we see now. Shay Gilgis Alexander was a guy who set a line to begin of his career when he was with OKC, but guess what? Now he is a 30 point scorer and he hooping his ass off. Now if you go out there and you consistently play him at the beginning, who knows? Injuries happen all the time. You don't wanna go out there and risk injuring your franchise player in order to end entertain viewership. That shit's Fuck the viewers, nigga. You don't need to do that. When you can slowly progress minutes, Giannis, as we see, Giannis eventually got to where he is now as being the best player in the league. You don't rush your product in order to entertain the fans. It, it, it don't even work like that. It don't even work like that. Money, but overall, when you talk about the longevity of your franchise, you want to make sure that your franchise cornerstone is healthy. So, of course, I'm going to sit here and we fucking 13 and 8. 13 and 8. Yeah, but the, it'll be cool, but the Bucks didn't tend to get Giannis. Giannis. He wasn't no lottery pick or nothing like that, so I, I wouldn't go that right. I actually feel like the Bucks did it right where they didn't tank, and they actually took time, and they took time for like prospects like Giannis, who wasn't high on people's boards, but we see he turned out to be an NBA, uh, NBA superstar, probably going down as one of the best of all times, and they didn't do no tanking. They did all, they brought in Drew Holiday. They brought in good players. They didn't have to suck to get bring, uh, suck to get uh, number one pick. Okay. Chris Middleton was just trying to spit out. No, I'm just, uh, <laughs> niggas just niggas just panic and niggas just saying whatever. You just, okay, Derek, you're trying it's to not easy, bro. Oh, that's good, Mike. When you look at teams like the Lakers, the Lakers were bad for a long time. Guess what they got? They got multiple young, great core pieces. What did they do with those pieces? They went and got LeBron in free agency, and then they traded those pieces off to New Orleans in order to compete for a championship, which they won with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. That is a big reason why. Why are you looking at the judges? It allows you to build up great quality pieces and move them, or either develop them to where you are now a championship contending team. There's value in that. Why are you looking at them though? Like, for a minute, both of y'all was ass. It was awful. That last rebuttal is what gives you the win. You but even that. though Mike fumbled in the first round, you didn't do shit in your first round. Yeah, so they I, didn't, think I, you I didn't even know what side, what stance you was. I had to re like, what is there? You, said, you said something. I was like, that's just not true. I don't remember exactly what it was. I'm mad at myself. You said something. Sometimes like, you just got to say it with confidence when you're debating. The dog but I'm going to sit here and be like, that's not true. Right. He was saying, why would you sit? Why would you not say your players when the only point is to entertain the fans? Like, right. Yeah, just fuck the fans. Fuck, fuck, the, fuck the fans. But I think your last rebuttal is a good argument for tanking. Um, so for that reason, I'll pick Derek. Yeah, me too. I think the energy came at the end. I don't think either one of y'all had a good start. At all. <laughs> at least I knew Mike's stance, though. Yo, shit, I was kind of like, damn. I knew I knew what you were supporting halfway through it. Then you said something else. I'm like, then it's like, why would you sit in if you're 13 and eight? <laughs> Niggas really be panicking, bro, I swear. That was, that was a good topic that I think y'all fucked up. Yeah. I think there's a lot to be said one way or it really was. I think I think uh, you know for against tanking, I would have had a lot more to say. In favor of tanking, I don't think I would have had as much to say. I'm trying to think. What would you say for tanking? Maybe in the NBA, 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 or NFL tanking is probably a lot more valuable. But NBA tanking, like, like if you're bad, you're gonna be bad. And you're gonna get a lottery team, lottery pick anyway. What? I don't know. Rock paper scissors shoot. Rock paper scissors shoot. Okay. Who would win? The 2017 Warriors or the 96 Bulls? Ooh, you know I had to double it. Who would I want? Uh, I would personally pick the Warriors. I think I have some, I have some things to say about the Warriors that nobody would ever say. I wonder. So, can you go first? 
and he's picking, uh, he has the Warriors, I have the Bulls. Mmm, okay. Listen, if I had the Warriors, I'd be like, listen, man, the Warriors are the greatest constructed team of all time. We have Steph Curry, a top 10 point guard of all time. You have Klay Thompson, somebody who should be top 75 all time. You have Kevin Durant, who's somebody who's top 15 all time. You have Draymond Green, who's another person that should be top 75 all time. And then the center, I don't remember who the center is. It don't matter who the center is. It What's your name? It doesn't matter what your name is, because you got Kevin Durant. They say, oh, what you got? Mike going to guard Durant, and Scotty going to guard Curry, and Dennis going to guard Klay, and they going to guard this. They ain't never seen nothing like the seven to 2017 Warriors, all them screens and three-point shooting. Who gonna chase Steph Curry around all day? The motherfuckers gonna get tired. Mike smoking them cigars all day after each championship after 98. I'm pretty sure he was tired. You think he was all sweet and he was all great in 98 because he beat up on John Stockton and Karl Malone? Wait until you get a hold of Steph Curry. There's a reason that we talk about Steph Curry in that light. One of the greatest shooters of all time. They ain't never seen no shooter from the parking lot. Hate is so good, it can't even sit in the park. But you ain't talking about my shooters, then what you talking about? Shooter, shooter, silence, nigga, then what you talking about? Klay Thompson, one of the greatest two-way players of, of all time? He ain't gonna really do nothing to Michael Jordan, but he gonna challenge him. He gonna give him something to work with. Yeah, you got Dennis Rodman, but Dennis Rodman is not the basketball player that Draymond Green is. Yeah, he got more heart, he got more grit, he's a better rebounder, but he does not fit with the Bulls like Draymond fits with Steph Curry and, and those boys. Right, you got Steve Kerr, the secret weapon. He know all their moves. He know everything that they bout. Steve Kerr, what's Steve Kerr doing on the court? You can't play Steve Kerr. They're going to say, who is he going to guard him? We switching everything. You're going to have to switch everything. You can't play screens like that. Time. Now, if I had the Bulls, listen, man, we talk about the 19, what is it? Oh, 96 Bulls. 1996 Bulls. Obviously, you got Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player of, of all time. What are you talking about? Obviously, Michael Jordan, they say, oh, well, they never seen nothing like, they never seen nothing like the Warriors, but they ain't never seen nothing like Mike. Watch that mouth. Him and Scotty, the greatest, the greatest tandem, the greatest collective two to ever play. Maybe not two in terms of talent, but in terms of collective and how they play with each other. Ain't no two tandem play better than them. You got Michael Jordan. Who's stopping Michael Jordan? He getting about 35. Scotty Pippen getting his 20. Tony Kukos. Who fucking with Tony Kukos? Tony, tu Tony Kukos is a, uh, an extremely poor man's Kevin Durant. He's a seven foot sniper shooter. Space out that floor. Dennis Rodman can check anybody. He getting physical with anybody. Them pretty boys are soft. Old light skinned mo mofos. He gonna try to out Draymond gonna out of, try to out Dennis Rodman. Uh, Dennis Rodman. It ain't gonna happen. Dennis Rodman gonna make that boy cry. Once he slap him on the ass, he's finished. He touching, they touching up Steph Curry, they touching up all them light skinned pretty boys. Light, if basketball ain't no pretty game, this ain't no, this ain't no pretty game. Because when you want to talk about who gonna get the calls at the end, obviously ain't nobody getting blown out. You trust Kevin Durant at the end of the game and Steph Curry over Michael Jordan? You watch that mouth. What are you talking about? Michael Jordan at the end of the game? Sure, I mean, sure, every team made it close. The Knicks made it close. The Jazz made it close at the end of the game, sure. But when it came down to who is you betting your bread on at the end of the game, who are you putting the money on? Put the parlay. I put the parlay on Mike. I wanted to be like Mike. My name is Mike. Okay, 17 words is first year the round. Yeah, or just, it's just a dynasty. I mean, any version you want. But I would assume you want 2017. <laughs> Do not. I'm sure, yeah. Okay, your time starts now. The 2017 Golden State Warriors, the first version of the Kevin Durant Warriors, is the best orchestrated, best put together team in the history of basketball. There's nobody on the Chicago Bulls that I trust to run around to guard Steph Curry. I'm going to say we got the up end strictly because of our, our shot. Our shot diversity. If we need to get down low, we got that. If we need to shoot the threes, we got that. And I don't know if the Chicago Bulls necessarily got that. Steph Curry is giving the work to the Bulls. And we ain't even mentioning, we got two, two potential top 10 players of all time on this roster. The greatest connector in recent history, Draymond Green, and also one of the top five shooters of all time. We got one of the better coaches who learned a little bit from your team that he's using in this hypothetical series. You know what I'm saying? He's using this. He knows the tendencies of Mike. He knows the tendencies of Scotty, and he gonna work in our favor to make that happen. I think the biggest argument for this team is the fact that Steph Curry is unguardable. And though you got Mike, and though you got Pip, they ain't never seen no shit like Steph Curry. Hey. 
It's hard though, niggas. He he did a good. I think he hit on a lot of points that I hit on. He just didn't say it with the same energy. Like when you debating, you gotta understand when you debate, it's not a rubric. It's you're talking to people. You gotta make motherfuckers feel something. When you speak, you gotta speak with a sense of urgency that niggas know what time it is. Niggas know what you want. What, Mike? You know Mike ain't nobody guard Mike. They needed two for Mike. Send three. He's going on all the motherfuckers. I put plugs on all you bitches. You feel me? I'm going with the 96 Bulls because the one fact that cannot be forgotten, they are a dynasty that we never saw lose the finals. We saw the Warriors dynasty lose to the, to the Toronto Raptors. We've never seen that from the Bulls. You can sit up here and say Steph Curry is unguardable, but the fact is Michael Jordan is the god of basketball, the undisputed number one that has been flawlessly untouchable. And I love the Chicago Bulls because we got Ron Harper to, to focus in on Steph Curry. Steph Curry, they, he, he usually don't really deal with size like that. We got a guy who gonna lock that ass up. The Bulls, historically, one of the greatest defenses who can switch every motherfucking thing. Rodman ain't got no fear in his heart about Draymond Green. He ain't fucking hard out. Who gonna stop him on the grass? You know the Warriors don't rebound that well when they got some good size. Come on now. Scotty Pippen, all of and Durant, Josh Strapp, boy can't breathe at all. And Clay Thompson will be so fucking enamored that Michael Jordan has a call for him. Michael Jordan gonna walk on through that ass. <laughs> Phil Jackson is the God. greatest. Where's where coach at? I don't know. Y'all can't think about what he's saying. Uh, okay. He's, uh, whatever. Eddie, your rebuttal starts now. You talk about how the fact that my team has lost against the Raptors. We don't ignore the fact that Kevin Durant tore his Achilles or that Clay Thompson also was injured in the series. We know damn well if they was healthy, they win every single season. If Steph, if, uh, if fucking Kevin Durant don't go to Brooklyn, they continue to do this run because they are so much better than everybody else and would be better than their Bulls team. I'm not worried about a fucking Ron Harper. This man Steph Curry's played against played the league for almost 15 years. He's played against Kawhi. Uh, Fuck Kawhi. Uh, I'm fine with injuries because you know why? It's a part of the game of basketball. And Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson, they had injuries. We don't have that for the Bulls. The Bulls don't have an if. That's the one thing about the 96 Bulls. There ain't no fucking if. If if was a fucking fifth, we'd all be drunk. Ooh, you better talk that talk. You better talk that motherfucking talk. You better talk to them. We're good. God, y'all can't fuck with him. Steve Kerr is not Phil Jackson, and Steph Curry is not used to 90s physicality. He is, he knew to this new age basketball where everything is foul and foul. No, but Ron Huff whooping that dick, he gonna be uh... a. <laughs> What do you say? Wait. No, but Ron Huff whooping that dick, he gonna be a. Uh... <laughs> that nigga said with his face. He said, what did he just say? Yeah. Yeah. my bad. Uh, I actually like Pierre's energy and his argument. So I, I'm gonna go Pierre in this one. Facts, niggas. I'm telling you, when you're debating, bro, it's not fair that people go off energy, but that's, that's humans, bro. Humans gonna go off energy. That's probably what happened with Hitler. Niggas was probably like, hey, yo, Hitler kind of wildin'. He kind of doing too much. He talking about killing these people. I'm not really for the killing. But this motherfucker got energy. This motherfucker got energy. I'm sorry. But, yo, he just said he's trying to kill thousands of people. Innocent people. I get, I, feel, I get you. I, I feel that. But the energy. You can't replace the energy. The energy is everything. Good? Energy is everything. I think I think Katrina had better points, but he had better energy and it made me want to believe in that bullshit. <laughs> it made me want to believe that's the so whole point. took this and threw it across the room. <laughs> or Luka Doncic I think Luka they're both pretty easy uh I don't know I probably would say Jokic because he's more proven in the playoffs he has multiple MVPs 
He does everything. He does everything Luka does just better. He's a better passer than Luka. He's a more efficient scorer than Luka. Yes, Luka's a point guard. So, yes, he's going to score more because he has the ball in his hands more. But who do you want initiating the offense? Whose style of play is more likely to get you wins? That's going to be obviously Jokic. Jokic rebounds better. He passes better. He scores more efficiently. He's a better leader. He has more accolades. The only thing that Luka does better than Jokic is probably dribble and shoot step back threes. Now, if I want somebody to dribble and shoot step back threes, I'll take Harden over LeBron. It's obvious that Jokic is the better player. Jokic is more proven. He's he's does more what he has. Yes, Luka puts on his show. He scores. He does all these things. And I understand that, you know, that's so sexy to the eye. But who is going to get me to where I need to get to? It's going to be Jokic. Jokic is able to play with more people. He, he's able to have the ball in his hands not as much. Luka, he can score. He can do all, all these things. But he's not. he doesn't lead to victories as much as Jokic. They're both great players. But, you know, if I had to pick one, obviously it's Jokic. And it's not really close. Don Chicken, I'll go first. See, he went Luca, so I, I don't know. Oh. So he got the pick. Ain't he gonna go first? Sorry, move. Your time starts now. Luca Doncic is a better player because he walked into the league, and people are already saying he's on the tra trajectory to be a superstar. They, he's got his team literally desperate. They went to go get Chris Stops. They went to go get Jalen Brunson. They went to go get all these players so they could put. <clears throat> they could put Luca Doncic. He's playing again. He's playing again. In a position to win a championship. He makes the players around him better in multiple ways. One is that he can, he can get past anybody he wants. Uh, <laughs> can we restart this? No. 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 He can he take anybody to, better. To look. Go first. The, man, the man instantly makes his team better because he instantly he's a walking mismatch. He kills everybody. He can... Once he gets to the paint, the team is going to have to collapse. He can kick it out to his three-point shooters. He's had times where he's had players like Mikael Bridges on him and treated him like he was a damn baby. And he's doing basic fundamental moves. That's just how completely sound he is. He's been playing basketball with grown men since he was 14 years old. <laughs> 14 years old, and now he's in the league, and it, he's still, you can tell, right? Time. Nicole Jokic is a better basketball player, and I think that's why he has two MVPs. I think one of those MVPs also came with two of his starters and second and third best player out for an entire year, majority of the season, and he still was able to elevate his team to a playoff team. Luka barely got into the, the, the past the Clippers. Uh, there's an argument that says Kristaps is better without playing with Luka. There's an argument that Jalen Brunson has grown into an all-star point guard not being next to Luka Doncic. There's also an argument that Jamal Murray is as good as he is because he plays next to Nikola Jokic and he can get his shit off. Michael Porter Jr., 6'10 sniper, is probably better suited next to Nikola Jokic instead of being a primary ball handler who have to create for himself. We've seen a lot of guys step up in their game be elevated. Aaron Gordon, best version of his fucking self we ever seen next to Nikola Jokic. Monte Morris is a guy that you and the Washington Wizards think, hey, can maybe be a starting point guard. You know why? Because he played next to fucking Nikola Jokic, right? Backups look like starters. All that shit can be said about Luka Doncic too, bro. <laughs> Reggie, Reggie Bullock? Reggie Bullock is okay. He's a, bro, Luka Doncic, he's gonna get people paid. He's got to People want to talk about Dwayne Finney-Smith before he got to the damn Mavericks. Dwight Powell is back to being a starting center, and that can happen because you have a person like Luka that can make anybody better. It's not many passes he really can't do. He has, bro, he's got so much zip on the ball, you can't help off him. Any help is going to lead to you probably giving up an easy basket, and that's why so many teams are trying to focus in on just Luka Doncic. This nigga said zip on the ball. He, he, he talking about zip on the ball. That's bad. Everybody else is Luka. The same argument you made for the players, I can make against. I think Reggie Bullock had a better motherfucking season with the Knicks is why the Mavericks wanted to get him. He can't hit a fucking shot now because a lot of guys go play next to Luka and they have one role, and if they can't fucking do that, then they look ass. They got to revert back to Dwight Powell when they had JaVale McGee, who was a highlighted signing. They have Christian Wood, and they're playing Dwight Powell because Luka takes away superpowers. You are like LeBron James when you build around him. Kevin Love, you can't get 30 rebounds no more. Sit in the corner and shoot a fucking three. When you don't make them, you're going to look bad. Uh, fuck up out of here. Yeah, that wasn't even close. Uh, Please sweep. Yeah. 
I feel like Mike, you went a tough route by going Luka instead of going a two-time MVP. That's what I was saying. The Jokic would have been easier to go for, like, way easier. He has more success. He does more for his teammates. Jokic just on paper seems better. Luka is a is more of a highlight reel. Like, Luka puts up 60, 20, and 10. Like, he does all these things, and he's really he's really great. Like, Luka's really great. But if we're going to argue, like, Jokic, I would say it's easier to argue. Like that, I think you could have won it he though. But you I, immediately bringing up Chris Stapps as if that shit didn't work is crazy to me. Yeah, and Jalen Brunson and like Jaylen. they didn't leave and now they look better. Like you set yourself up for that rebuttal from him. Who is the greatest NBA player of all time? Rock paper scissors. Oh, there's no options. Okay, I thought you. I thought there was more. It's not like you have more. Hey, you finna get smoked because you don't even pay attention. Rock paper scissors shoot. Rock paper scissors shoot. Like my. Uh, Michael LeBron. This is actually a good one. This is a good one to do for a minute. It's like a nice little entertain. If I had to pick, I would say I would say Michael Jordan. I think I have a lot. See, all right, this is what I would say. Ready? I'm a, I'm a count when it says thirty. Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. A lot of people like to say, well, stats, LeBron is more stats. Listen, the NBA scores more points now than they, they ever did before. Scoring is, is such a hot commodity. Today, defense is actually what gets you more wins because shooting is so, such a hot commodity. Everybody wants shooters. Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time because people doubled and tripled him. There's no spacing. Of course, it's easier to get 60 points when every bucket you score is one-on-one. -on -one. Michael Jordan never, damn near never, got a one-on-one. -on -one. Motherfucker never gave Mike a clean fight and when he did they jumped his ass one two three people on his back and he still got 37 a night and he still has more points than Michael than uh, LeBron James ever uh, ever scored in his life in a season yeah LeBron James has more longevity takes care of his body whatever but who was better in his peak when you watch the footage there was nobody better than Michael Jordan Michael Jordan when he wanted to pass he passed when Michael Jordan wanted to be the best defender in the league he was defensive player of the year yeah LeBron has more longevity because technology and sneakers and shit like that but who was better Basketball MJ. Now, if I say LeBron, LeBron James is the greatest basketball player of all time. LeBron can score 60 points when he wants to score 60 points. He can pass the ball. He can rebound. He can be the best rebounder on the court. When you look at his finals in 2015, he was getting 15, 16 rebounds a night. Michael, um, uh, LeBron James is an all-time great passer, probably the best passer of all time, if not top three. He's a he's going to be the number one all-time scorer of all time. So he's all time. He's number one in scoring. He's one of the best passers of all time. He's a great rebounder. He's top 10 in steals. These are stats you can't go by. Plus, he's been playing for 20 years. Mike took a fucking break in the middle of the heat. The motherfucker took a break to play minor league baseball. LeBron kept the in into the thick of it. Into the thick. He stayed in the thick of it. In the thick of it. LeBron is that dude. Eight straight finals. Are you crazy? Yeah, Le uh, Jordan or, or LeBron has less finals wins than Michael Jordan, of course, but LeBron is the better basketball player. He never got the coaching. He never got the help in the system that he needs. LeBron can do anything. One through five, everything. I feel like that was a good argument for both sides. I feel like, I'm trying to think. I was trying to do it within a minute. I could have made a better argument for LeBron. I think, honestly, I made a great argument for both of them. I think I made a great argument for both of them. You, what order? Why would you tell me your answer? Why would you tell me your answer, though? Um, he might say Michael Jordan. But he can't, I'm sorry, what well, no, was the question again? Who's the greatest player of all time? Yeah, and I'm picking my player, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, so he can't pick Jordan. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's some bullshit. Yeah. Ain't no option, though. I mean, so you by letting him go first, you can't pick because it ain't no option. That's how I would have phased it. But shit, you said you got Michael Jordan. <laughs> you feel me? Your time starts now. The greatest basketball player of all time is easily LeBron James. There is literally, throughout the course of his career, he, he's had holes in this game. Oh, he can't shoot. Boom, he came back a little bit older hitting his jump shots. We've seen this man lead a team to the conference finals every single year for about nine years straight. Nine years straight. They say, oh, he can't do it in the West Conference. Yeah, he had that down year. But what did he do? He won a championship in the Western Conference. Offensively, not many people better. People always underestimate the defense. He should have won a defensive player with Marcus Salgado. He's always been a really, really plus defender as long as we look past his last couple years and being old age. He is a one-man wrecking crew, a one-man team. There's not been a lot of people in history that is a one-man team. Look at some of those rosters he led to the finals. Fucking Sasha Vujicic, great. Mo Williams, you're an all-star now because you played with LeBron James. That is how good 
he is for himself, and that is how good he is for his organization, that no matter who he was rocking with, they were a successful and good team. Not good enough to make the playoffs. We're talking good enough to be in the finals. We're talking... Here's the thing about Michael Jordan. When you look at the 6-0 and record, LeBron James... Yeah. You went 6-0? and That's such a bad way to... Oh, uh, damn, bro. I would... Bro, when I'm arguing MJ, fuck 6-0. Like, yeah, he has a 6-0 record, but, like, if you actually watch Michael Jordan, I don't give a fuck if he went 0-6. The motherfucker was the best basketball player ever. Well, that's not... If he went 0-6, it'd be different. But you get what I'm saying. It's more about how he played. He went nine times, but when he get there, what do he do? He only won four. So why would... When you look at four and five compared to 6-0, and oh, that number immediately is better. Jordan brought it defensively all the time, no matter what. Multiple all-defensive teams. And he was... Look, he's on all defensive teams, and he was a dude that could... He averaged 38 points in one season one year. The dude came in, and his jump shot was automatically working. He ain't had to go back into the offseason multiple years trying to fix his jump shot. Jordan came in the league with a jump shot, and the mid-range game has always been dead. <laughs> What? What? They distracted me. Keep talking. Talk to yourself. Um. Y'all go. Y'all started laughing. <laughs> but um, Michael Jordan. Look, this is how good Michael Jordan is. Can I, can I say this last point? Michael Jordan took a year. Time. Let him get his last point off. Whatever you want. Oh, oh, let him get his last point off. Michael Jordan took a break away from basketball after winning three straight championships. Came back and won another three straight. That just shows you how great he is. He don't even have to play consistently. He can take a break and still come back and fuck people up. <laughs> you can understand how funny he is, bro. You mentioned the, the losing of LeBron James. You look at every single one of those final series he's played. It's only been one where he was a favorite and he lost. Every single other time he lost is because we relied on Mo Williams or we relied on Sasa Pavlovich to try to step up. He leads his team there, but he always loses to the better team. Jordan's championship opponents were ass. They were they were object every single series. Go through every single final series. They were the heavy favorite in every single one. He got no no like real push once we were in that finals with LeBron. Okay, Derek. Your rebuttal starts now. When you're so great, why do you need any push? There's automatically we already know you're winning because Mike is Michael Jordan. At the end of the day, why would Michael Jordan ever receive any pushback of him being a favorite to win in the series? Wow, oh, y'all always throwing me off. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron, I don't know. You suck at fucking debate. <laughs> your point of your face is that's throwing you off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. How <laughs> about in your face? I throw you off. <laughs> That's easily KB. I feel like Eric Head was very, 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 very on point until you talk about it. you're laughing. You, <laughs> bro, you was on your way. It's so funny because Jordan didn't have no jumper when he first came. That's here, what made bro. us. That's laugh. what made us start laughing. You were like that jump was automatically in. We looked at each other like, oh, he was a. You could have looked at. That's what you get for not playing two K. <laughs> Yeah, the, the early, early Jordan, Jordan comes in like a 53. <laughs> Alright, so KB has two points and Pierre has three, so they're gonna be the final. Come on, read that two motherfucker. Gosh, man. Hey, man, if y'all enjoying this video, if you watching up to this point, Show some love. Give me a comment, a like. Show some love, my nigga. I'm having a blast. I hope y'all enjoying this video. You feel me? If you are enjoying this video, let me know. Let me know what's up. You feel me? Finals, bro. It's just, right, I'm talking about what the situation is. <laughs> Who is the most influential NBA player of all time? Ooh, you got. Is there options? You got Kobe, you got Steph, you got Jordan. Oh, uh, you can go Magic. Magic will be a sleeper. Magic will be a sleeper. But I think Jordan is probably the easiest route with the Dream Team. You can go Kobe. You know, Kobe will be a little bit harder. to. It was hard to say Kobe's more influential than MJ. You know, because, you know. And then Steph Curry. So, I would either go Steph Curry... MJ, maybe Sleeper Magic. I could really do damage if niggas gave me magic. I really do damage with magic. Um, magic, Jordan, or Curry. Those are the three options that you really would have. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. 
Why don't pick a scissors too? Nick's gonna keep picking scissors. He goes first. Where's your answer? Michael Jordan. Who are you going to go? I mean, Steph Curry probably would be most people's other pick. If not, probably Magic, yeah. Who's your, who's your answer, KB? Steph Curry, I guess. Okay. Your time starts now. The most influential player of all time is Steph Curry. We talk about a player that is that is influential in the moment, but also influential for the next generation. You be your EJ games. EJ be trying to pull up from half court because they know what Steph Curry can really do. Steph Curry revolutionized the three-point shot in the game of basketball. So much so that every single team is running very similar offenses. We don't shoot threes. We might do a little mid-range here now, but three-pointers are king. And before Steph Curry was putting up seven, eight three-pointers a game, there was not a team in basketball that was shooting it as free frequently as Steph Curry is. We're talking um, not even just individual teams, but down to the players where it used to be, oh, the, the shooting guard position is the one that is the shooter. Everybody else get it how they live. Now we got point guards through centers that are expanding their range. Drummond, three for three for three. He wasn't doing that shit before Steph Curry was in the league because Steph Curry is the influential. Bro comes up and every single body, everybody in the arena is there for Steph Curry. Nobody's ever came to a ring thinking that, hmm, I, I care about Klay Thompson's game. I would have went Magic. I think Magic would have caught niggas off guard. I think Magic would have caught niggas off guard. I'm like, all right, ready? I'm going to do a minute. Ready? I'm going to start at 48. Magic Johnson is the most influential basketball player of all time. Let me tell you why. Well, first of all, without Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, there would be no motherfucking NBA. Ain't no influential, ain't, ain't no influen, influence in nobody. Magic Johnson is the absolute point guard. He is the player that people want to be. You talk about a 6'9 guy that can handle the rock. Yeah, people talk about Durant because he can score. Yeah, scoring doesn't necessarily lead to as many championships as passing and facilitating and leadership obviously like Magic Johnson did. Magic Johnson is the guy that people wanted to be like. LeBron James is a protege of that. Big guys wasn't handling the rock. You want to go talk about point center? Magic Johnson is that guy. The Jokic, the 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 dribbling center, the Embiid, the Giannis, the LeBrons, the T-Max. Those are the people that branched out of the Magic Johnson tree and you want to talk about influential. The NBA wouldn't be nothing. There would be no NBA. You talk about smile and marketability. Yeah, Kareem was the best player, but when Magic came to the scene, they already knew what time it was. Magic Johnson influenced the entire NBA with his personality on and off the court. That's what I would say probably about Magic. Okay. Pierre, your time starts now. Michael Jordan is the most influential basketball player of all time. You see, you look at the game right now, how many guys are winning number 23? How many guys are winning this shoot? Before he came into the league, Converse dominated the NBA as far as appeal and apparel if what players were on their feet. Now guys all breaking their neck to get what? A Nike deal and to get their own signature shoe. You got guys like LeBron, KD, what are they doing now? They're retroing their shoes because why? We walk around in retro Michael Jordan shoes. You got guys like Kobe coming in with this fierce competitive <laughs> nature that's dominated the league. The first thing they do to say a player ain't as great, they don't have to kill the mentality like Mike. We talk about Gatorade commercials. I want to be like Mike. I want to be like Mike. All that shit, I've never seen from Steph Curry. Hey, I love Steph. Great guy. Christian brother. I love him in faith. I ain't wearing no Christian money. brother. I love him in faith. I'm sorry. You ain't got no under armor sweats on right now. These are Nike. Michael Jordan. Also, if I go in your closet right now, your shit is dominated with retro Jordans and not no Stephs. In my entire life, I've seen you wear Steph Curry shoes once. And I think I gained your ways in those seven cards. You made me. Yeah, the same kind. <laughs> okay. KB, your rebuttal starts now. You got it with the sneakers. For sure. There's nobody better than Mike when it comes to that. We're talking pure on basketball. That is, a, that is the route I'm going here. When it comes to evolutionizing the game, Mike did some things. People wanted to have the killer instinct of Mike. But Mike just did what fucking Bernard King was doing. This man, Steph Curry, there was not a single person in the history of basketball that was doing what this man is doing. And now we got every single player since him trying to replicate the same shit. That is influential in the sense of basketball. Yeah, fashion. We don't give a fuck about Under Armour. But in the game of basketball, which uh, one? Okay. Last 30 seconds of the competition. Now, 
You're talking about in a recent by the state because you're talking about right now. But you don't think when Jordan was dominating the game, you walk into high school basketball, everybody was doing fadeaways with their tongue out trying to hang in the air? Are you out of your mind? Do not forget where you came from. You from Chicago. You know how influential Michael Jordan is. Ball heads? Who the fuck was wearing a ball head before Michael Jordan? Niggas is winning championships now. Guess what they want to do? First thing they do, they don't even smoke. They want to run and get us a car. Like Michael fucking Jordan. Long, baggy shorts, black socks with the shoes. Chicago Bulls playoff thing. That's Michael Jordan influence around the entire game. Uh, Businessman suits, owning uh, teams. Michael fucking Jordan. Don't tell me, Ty, I'm Mike. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to debating, I am Mike. That was the best. Uh, I think it was... I think KB did. I, I think I'm gonna go KB here. I I think he he talked too much about shoes. He didn't even talk about the dream team. He didn't even talk about how influential the the dream team was, and um you know how the dream team made the game more of a global game, and how everybody on the dream team impacted the future NBA. Like the dream team, it put basketball on a global display. When you talk about globally, Michael Jordan was the guy on the most influential basketball team of all time. The 1992 Dream Team. People wanted to be like Michael Jordan. Steph Curry ain't even. He ain't even playing for real. He ain't. He not even playing in in the uh, in the Olympics. He don't even. He don't give a fuck about the culture. Michael Jordan gave a fuck about the culture when they called up Mike. They already knew what time it was. Everybody coming. Michael Jordan couldn't get no air. He couldn't get, he couldn't get nothing. He couldn't get no time. He couldn't do nothing. Everybody wanted to be up Mike's jockstrap at the end of the day. He was the face of the team that globalized basketball. Basketball was on a global display. Global. Yes, yeah, Steph Curry is using the platform now that Michael Jordan created, but there wouldn't have been any platform to that degree without Michael Jordan. So I, I would give it to KB because he didn't even mention the Dream Team. He just he talked more about shoes. For sure, right there for me. Uh, me personally, I like KB's argument where he stuck with on the court because I'm off the court. Steph Curry can't fuck with Jordan. Yeah, but then P had the off court and on the court parts of his debate that I feel like went his way. It was a tough one. I got to go with P, though. I. I don't know. It's something about P movement or something, but his energy make you believe it. He had all the points though. He fuck every point Pierre said. He's moving, so he's got my vote. That's all. They're debating, and I the way he debates, I'm siding with P. You y'all both had a lot of good points. Like D Mail said, it. he he brought in the on and off the court thing. You kind of you kind of disregarded. You felt like P had you in that off court with Under Armour. Yeah, so he disregarded that, but I was like, "That's a strong ass point right there." Uh, well, I guess you could have used the point that no one's, no one bought Under Armour before Steph Curry actually. Kids still buy Under Armour just because Steph Curry. I, I, I went to a high school game and see a pair of Under Armour in the court. And if we being honest, niggas was buying it before Steph. Brandon Jennings was the first person to get Under Armour basketball section. I would hate your ass up for saying that silliness, but you ain't know that. You really thought Steph was the first basketball athlete for Under Armour. So that's a wrap for the debate episode. I would have gave that one to KB. I think, I think Steph Curry is just so much harder to to beat. But honestly, he didn't even talk about the Dream Team. So if we're not talking about the Dream Team, then KB got a shot talking about Steph Curry. I honestly would have went Magic Johnson threw niggas for a loop. Niggas did. Bro, once I throw Magic out there, niggas wouldn't have known what to do. For Realistically, niggas wouldn't have known what to do. Promise. I come out on top as a champion, perfect like Jordan, no losses, undefeated. But KB hit me right for my money in the last showdown. Um, obviously, we always in the final somehow, some way. This is starting to two, the Warriors first Cavs. I just look like the Warriors in these situations. Um, but much love to y'all. Make sure y'all subscribe, like if you're new. Leave a comment on any of these next ones you would like to see or any ideas that you have. As always, we are through the wire. We out. Peace. Hey, definitely let me know what y'all think. Uh, def let me know if y'all enjoyed it. I had a good time. I'll probably make some shorts out of this. This is a lot of content in here, man. It's a lot of content. I might get on my hooping content. But uh, I see y'all when I see y'all. Peace.